Welcome to our lecture online. Our next JE advanced question deals with capacitors and in particular this one a capacitor where part of it has a dielectric and the other part does not and then ask for particular ratios and which ones of those are correct. It could be one, could be all, at least one must be correct. All right, let's read the problem. A parallel plate capacitor has a dielectric slab of dielectric constant K between its plates that covers one-third of the area of its plates as shown. So this only covers one-third area. This two-thirds of the area does not have a dielectric. The total capacitance of the capacitor is C, while that of the portion with the dielectric in between is C1. When the capacitor is charged, the plate area covered by the dielectric gets charge Q1 and the rest of the area gets charge Q2. The electric field in the dielectric is E1 and then in the other portion is E2. Choose the correct option or options ignoring the edge effects. So this one is a little bit tricky in that you look at that capacitor and you go surely E1 over E2 cannot equal 1. The electric fields cannot be the same in both. But that would be the wrong assumption to make right away. You really want to use your rules of capacitors. One thing you can always be sure about a capacitor that has one portion with a dielectric, the other one does not, regardless of what the deal is anywhere else, you know that the potential difference across the two plates must be the same for the same two portions of the capacitor. In other words, the delta V on portion one must equal the delta V on portion two. That you know for sure. You also know that the capacitance is equal to charge over the voltage, which means that Q equals C times V, and that means that Q1 must equal C1 times V1, and Q2 must equal C2 V2 and notice since V1 and V2 are the same that simply is C1 V and C2 V. You also know from the physical size of a capacitor that C1 must equal and here we have a dielectric so it's the dielectric constant times epsilon sub naught times the area let's call it A1 divided by oh not A2 but divided by D the distance between the plates and of course distance here is from there to there and we also know that uh, A1 is over here, A2 is over here, we know that A2 is twice A1 because this is one-third and not two-thirds and we know that C2 is equal to, oh it doesn't have a dielectric constant so simply epsilon sub naught times A2 divided by D alright now what is the definition between electric field and the voltage? We know that the voltage, the delta V, must equal uh, electric field times the distance traveled. So that knows that delta V1 is equal to E1 times D and delta V2 is equal to E2 times D. But since, you know, since delta V1 equals delta V2, which has to be for that capacitor, then we know that therefore if these are the same and these are the same, therefore we know that E1 equals E2 or E1 divided by E2 is equal to 1. So it turns out that A is indeed correct, surprisingly. And of course if A is correct, then B cannot be correct. How about C? What is the ratio of Q1 to Q2? Well, we know that Q1 and Q2 are defined by this, so essentially Q1 divided by Q2 is the same as the ratio of C1 over C2. So we know that Q1 over Q2 is equal to C1V over C2V, of course the Vs are the same, and so C1 is equal to K epsilon sub naught times A1, and let me draw a line here so we don't get confused, over D divided by C2, which is epsilon sub naught, A2 over D. Notice that the epsilon sub naught cancels out, the D cancels out, and notice that A2 is twice A1, so this can be written as KA1 divided by 
A2 is 2 times A1. A1s cancel out. So the ratio of Q1 over Q2 is equal to K over 2. And notice they tell us it's 3 over K, so that we know is not correct. Finally, C over C1. All right, so C over C1 is the same as C1 plus C2 over C1. Oop. C1. Because these can be considered as two capacitors that are in parallel, and of course, capacitor in parallel can simply be added up. Then we divide C1 into the numerator, so we know that C divided by C1 is equal to 1 plus C2 over C1. Okay, C2 over C1, so that is equal to 1 plus C2 is a plus sub naught times A2 over D, and C1 is equal to K times epsilon sub naught times A1 over D, and the epsilon sub naughts cancel, and the Ds cancel. So now we also know that A2 is twice A1. So this is equal to 1 plus 2A1 divided by K times A1. Of course, the A1s cancel, and now we have 1 plus 2 over K. So this can be written as K over K plus 2 over K, which is equal to K plus 2 over K, and that was the ratio of C to C1. And notice for part D, C over C1 is indeed 2 plus K over K, same thing. So we know that D is correct, and there's two correct answers in this particular problem. Now you're given only three minutes. I think I spent more than three minutes. Seven. <laughs> Seven minutes. But I did a lot of talking, and I think if you concentrate on that, you probably can get close to three minutes for cranking this one out. But again, the key things to realize is that the voltages must be the same. And since Q is C times V, that means that Q1 over Q2 can be this, is the same as C1 over C2 because the voltages are the same. So those two ratios are the same. We know that C1 and C2 can be defined like this. We know that the ratios of the areas are defined like this. And then there was one more somewhere. Uh, where, what did I do with electric fields? I lost, oh yeah, right here. With electric fields, that there's a relationship between the voltage difference between the plates and the electric field. And notice that if the voltages are the same, that means the electric fields must be the same as well, since the distances are the same for the two parts. And that's the key to solving all those ratios, getting the correct answers. That is how it's done. Is that a wrap for today? All right.